Hi, I'm Jenny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension. And with me is my good friend of 25 years, Jean Scott. How are you doing? Good, good. She gave me these boards for my birthday. Uh, you want to explain? <laughs> well, I <laughs> saw these boards and immediately thought of you. Oh, thank you. And it's got a rope, too. Okay, okay. So we're here and we're going to put it together and show everybody what we can do with the, your birthday present. Okay, so it's July and it's hot, but we have some really cool ideas for you to do in July. So join us while we turn these three boards and some pots and some plants into a work of art. Join us for Delmarva Gardens, coming up next, right here on Pack 14. You know, when people who love to garden have friends who love to garden, well, that gets into a competitive sort of thing, doesn't it? Occasionally. Occasionally. So, like, for instance, when I know it's her birthday, I run around like crazy to try to find any kind of gardening thing that I know would be unusual, something that she might not have seen, or something that would make her laugh. And I've given her a lot of things that have made her laugh over the years. And so this year, she decided that she was, well, she's always returned the favor, but this year she found something that I had never seen before. And what it's going to do is we're going to be able to use these beautiful ferns here for her and plant them in a plant mobile, in a sense. Actually, that's kind of a good description of yeah, it. Um, yeah. I was down in New Orleans uh -huh. and we were walking past the flea market and saw this big display of hanging pots. Right. And we stopped and talked to the ivies, obviously. It's something I'd never seen before. And they called them Bayou Botany Boards. And I said, well, well this is perfect. And he told us they were made out of recycled Louisiana cypress. So they can be okay. hung outside and arranged in all these different different ways. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if I was going to buy one for me, I had to buy one for you. Absolutely. And the silly present I had purchased went in the closet, which you'll get for Christmas. <laughs> and so we talked about doing it for your little demonstration. So since I have a shady backyard, I decided on ferns. Okay. And so... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pot up mine mm -hmm. and then um, following the directions very carefully and then we're going to do some... She is a stickler for following for, directions. <laughs> for uh, the sun-loving plants for your yard. Yes. So borrowing an idea that you had because one of the directions it said is you don't want too much weight in them. Because right. Because you're trying to hang and balance this thing. So coffee filters, which I don't use, which I have plenty of, go into the bottom of the pot. Now, what would you normally have used? I use a lot of rocks because I have uh, some wind here, so I like rocks so I can get some, some weight on the pot so they don't fall over. But, but this is a heavy clay pot, so I don't think that it's going to have any trouble, uh, chance of blowing away like a plastic pot would. No. But okay. the other thing is, you know, if you have animals running around, sometimes they knock things over. Right. So, um, so we're going to use just regular potting soil. Regular, regular potting soil. And we're only going to fill it up to this uh, particular... Um, line right here yes. again yeah. to keep the soil and the weight down right uh -huh. so the other thing is is that um it the way the system works is that they have small pots and big pots right so you have four big pots and two small pots but you can get different boards and hang them so you can get different sizes if you're down in louisiana well no he, <laughs> I think he's, he'll send them to you oh, okay, so anyway good. so what i did was i um dug up one of my rabbit's foot ferns okay. and it turns out he's a little bit too big for the big pot so these things are almost indestructible so okay. we're going to do a little surgery a little on the rabbit foot fern little so, rabbit foot ferns so it doesn't hurt the rabbit's foot trust me on this one it doesn't hurt it any more than being on a keychain would okay so on this particular thing what we're doing is we're using clippers and or pruners and we're basically pruning Just it out pruning so it out but this is the rabbit's foot and right um, I still a little bit. I think you need to cut this side. Um, now the size pots we're starting out with. Uh, there's four that are six inch and two that are four inch pots. And you can get them all kinds of different places. They don't have to be brand new. If they're not brand new, you should go ahead and scrub them to get some of the uh, any of the algae off of it. Um, I would say on the inside. You want to make sure that the inside is nice and clean. If the outside has got any green on it, like moss or something like that, that adds to the character and you should leave it that way. Uh, but you always want to have the inside clean because you're putting a brand new plant in there. You don't want to put it into a spot that might have had disease before. The other so. thing is they do say you can use plastic pots, but it makes it a lot lighter. And if you're going to do it indoors because these pots ah. are weak, you can 
you know, use a plastic pot. Okay. So but that'll make it a lot lighter. So if you put that over there, All there's right. going to be a plant in waiting. Here we go. Plant in waiting. And then we're going to do this little, it's called a lemon button fern. This is the lemon button fern. And it's called a button fern because see how the foliage has made of, of little teeny buttons, which is kind of cool looking. I think that's very pretty. I like the fact that it arches. Mm -hmm. It's very graceful. So this is going to go into the other... Um, yeah, do you break pot. up? The yeah, roots? I break them up. Okay, usually. good. See how the roots are, are a soft brown color? Ferns have a very different kind of root system than a lot of other yeah, plants. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Most times I see brown roots, I get nervous, but not with ferns. Ferns, they, they, I think it's kind of a way to kind of hide in the soil. Yeah. Um, now, the, the rabbit's foot fern came out of my big pot. I, just, I think that you need to take some soil out and okay, put it smaller. It yes. Okay, just. Ready? See, we can tell each other what to do. <laughs> she'll she'll tell me listen. what to do. I'll tell her what to do. But anyway, I like to <laughs> I like to pack it down. Eventually, it's going to get packed down. There you go. And this soil already has fertilizer and stuff. In it, so and the gonna... soil's already moist, so she didn't have yeah. to add any moisture to. When okay. we're all done, though, we will go ahead and water everything in. Okay. okay. And that's that. second six-inch pot. And then uh, this Are you is using an... any of these guys? I'm going to use the maidenhair fern. Okay. I I think because I dug that up again in the garden, and that that spreads quite a bit, and that can get quite quite crowded. Isn't that gorgeous? So... This is the maidenhair fern. See how light and delicate it is. And, and that's this, a perennial, yeah. but I will bring these in in the wintertime because in the small pots, they're never going to survive. And can you keep it in the garage? Would it be? Um, yeah, I keep them upstairs in a room that's oh. not heated well, most of the time. That's good. And um, Do you want all three of them? Mm, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's fine. Good. There we go. Okay. Very delicate okay. resistance. Everybody this other them. one that's here is what they call the Japanese painted fern, and I'm so jealous that she can grow these. These are called painted ferns. Sometimes they're called ghost ferns because they're so white. But they also have this bright red uh, stem, or mi midrib, I'm sorry, and then the stem is kind of red too. So it's a very colorful for a fern. It's very, very colorful. I think this is Ursula's red, ah. this, this particular, because the red coloration, that's one I've been looking okay. at. Actually, a neighbor gave me that. I don't know, that might get too big for the pot. Those can get okay. quite large. So we might have to move on to this asparagus fern and a, um, a little nameless fern that we don't seem well, to Well, I would say that this is one of the strap leaf ferns. Let's, okay. let's call it do you that. Think there's, you think there's a small enough painted fern for this? We or? could certainly try it. Okay. I, I dug up some real tiny ones. All right. Let's see. I would say that this is not it. This is huge. Huge. Okay. But we could go ahead and print that out. Let me see what else we have in here. Okay. Here's, here's a small one. This would be perfect right there. Oh, is he a little guy? Yeah, that's right. a little guy. Perfect. There's another little guy. The oh. teeny guy. There teeny you go. Guy. All, All right. right. Good, 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 good. Right. And we're working outside, so any kind of mess we make, we can just hose off the driveway or sweep off the driveway, whatever we decide to do. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, ferns have a very delicate root system, um, but they're a very shallow root system, too. So th these pots do not have to be big or heavy or humongous because they'll go ahead and do very, very and well in And since they're going to be in the shade, I think just... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. They're going to be in the shade and under the irrigation. The irrigation will hit where I'm planning. I'm putting these these, these cypress thing. boards are, um, from what I understand, they don't rot. They're uh, termite resistant and everything else. They do say, I think, that you should refinish, you know, uh, waterproof them every year. You know, put something on them. Or let them just look more natural. Yes. Depending on how much time you have. Depending on how much time you have. Yes. So, are you going uh, to do the asparagus fern? Um, I yeah, I think I think I'm going to do the asparagus. I don't know if the, the I like the ivy because that's going to be more droopy, or the asparagus fern. Um, hmm. Okay, I would do the asparagus fern simply because we're sticking with ferns. Okay. All and right. even though this is not a true fern, it's going to give you that look. And by the end of summer, this will outgrow the pot, so you'll, yeah. you'll be able to go ahead and play with it. Oh, that's okay. way too much. Yeah, I know. Already, already we got. So this much. the asparagus fern. Um, often has little teeny thorns on it, so to me it's always a good thing to plant. I don't when you're know, not maybe that should have been in a bigger pot. That's but. what I was thinking. Do you want to do that instead of well, the uh, Japanese? Nah. See, that's the neat thing about playing with this. You never, you can go ahead and set this or that. I think it should go in this. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, these guys get planted in my garden. There you go. My neighbor gave them to me for this. So there we go. We'll plant them. We'll plant them later. Okay. All right. All right. You do the. Here you go. Let me just go ahead mm -hmm. and use asparagus ferns, and All I'll right. do finish out with this little 
So I'm just kind of fern. like getting the soil a little bit out. This is not really going to hurt the plants. Look at those nice roots. This is what keeps these roots so well. See how that nice, big, healthy root right there? That kind of helps it during periods of drought. There we go. Okay, and she's got the potting soil underneath. That's a good idea. I like this. This is a cool little potting bench. I have potting yeah. bench envy now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hadn't used it, and then I dragged it and left and put it outside, and I have the old uh, grill cover. Ah. It, so that uh, I can I can actually use it. It was not getting used at all sitting in the shed. There so we go. There all we right. are. All right. So and now we have one more of my plants, a little ivy. Okay. It's good. not a fern, but it likes the... Well, I still think shaded. It's yeah, it's going to be. And pretty. having the green and white gives you lots of different um, choices. And once again, that'll probably outgrow itself too, but still it'll be pretty for yeah. a while. There you go, a little bit more. Well, I always said plants are like Dalmatian, not Dalmatian, Great Dane puppies. They grow up. Just remember <laughs> that. When you plant something. Or golden retriever or puppies. Or golden retriever puppies. Like my hydrangea over there has outgrown its spot. Uh, okay, so now we've got all okay. mine done, so Ginny's going to do. You're going to do your sun plants. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get some sun plants, so don't go away. Enjoy the beautiful garden. I think I need to water some of these poor little herbs. Okay, oh, you brought the, uh, the bayou. Yes, this okay. Is the, this is the board that's been the object of our discussion. Okay. And uh, it doesn't look like much, but it's all handmade. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy makes them individually, and um, what he showed me is that this is the basic setup for okay. it. You put the pot in, All right. and then you turn it very carefully, make sure it's seated okay. very well up against the pot, so it's holding that. Now and you see, one of the reasons why we said you only filled it up to this level is that you need to have that area open so that this can hold the pot. And so they don't is, want the pot, they don't want the wood in the soil, so no. you know, you know. Because that it, would rot the wood. It, well, it's cypress, so it shouldn't rot, but well, anyway, true. but the, the, how you put it together, you have to be, you have to that. have it balanced, because if, when you add another pot, you have to balance it on the other side. Wow. And Look then, at this. then you keep doing hold it. it. Let's hold it up a little bit. Is that not amazing? And okay. then, what you do is you hook this and then you add your smaller pots. Awesome. So you can get additional boards. Right. And this is one reason why they ask you to keep the, the weight on it light. And you have to be very careful how you add pots because you don't want it, as you said earlier, it's kind of like a mobile. Yes. That you want to make sure that it's balanced. And I'm holding it, so okay, I'm going to put it Okay, I have one, down. two, three. Yeah, okay. So this, there's another one up here. Oh, okay, okay. So got it. once we get everything all planted, then we'll go over and show how it goes together with all the plants <laughs> in with the pots. Perfect. So you can buy additional little arms to um, just leave that there. add more plants, and you can actually build yourself a bigger version of it. Well, the nice thing about working with a bench like this is that when you need to add extra water for your herbs. Yes, you watering your potting soil underneath. I'm uh, watering everything, getting everything <laughs> nice and wet. So, okay, so for sun, because I have a sunny spot, and I have a shady spot too, but I decided, you know, not everybody has shade, some people have sun, I thought I will give you some options. One option is to go ahead and do herbs. Uh, so this is um, the kitchen sage. It's different than the ornamental sage, and this is very edible, and if you just rub your finger like this, you can smell the sage. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, and then I have some flat Italian parsley. I haven't really cleaned it up, but it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and groom it to make it look better. Uh, and the neat thing about parsley is the more you pick it, the more it grows. Remember, every time you prune something, you're asking it to grow, which is always a nice thing. So this certainly makes it easier for this yeah. one. Cutters? Oh, I don't think so. I think this is good. So there we go. And uh, now also don't be surprised because quite often the butterflies, especially the swallowtail butterflies, love parsley. So what they'll do is they'll go ahead and they'll lay their eggs on the underside of the leaf as if there was any right there. And then the eggs would hatch out and the little caterpillars will enjoy the parsley leaf too. So anytime you're picking parsley leaf so that you're going to go ahead and eat it, always take the time to look on the underside to see if you see anything. And actually, you can see that something was skeletonizing it right there. See how it's got the, the uh, kind of a tin? What they've done is they've gone ahead and eaten the under layer of the leaf. They've gone after the chlorophyll, which is the green stuff. 
and uh, so if you find some uh, little eggs there, you might want to leave them there, or you can just wash them off and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy it. So again, just as Jean did, the first thing you do is you start out with a clean pot. Make sure it has a good hole for water drainage. Um, once again, we want to keep it light, so we're putting a coffee filter in, so when we add the potting soil, it's not going to go out the hole, because that's a good size hole to have the potting soil. And that would make a mess and everything would be nasty. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some potting soil. There we go. Um, oh, I didn't share all the other things. So here, this is a type of thyme. This is called German thyme. And I like thyme because it cascades down. And uh, I like the way it looks and, and smells. And this is lemon thyme. And you can use lemon thyme for uh, anything with poultry or with fish because it has a nice lemony flavor. I find that the lemon thyme is not very winter hardy. And that's not going to matter with this one because if this lives over the winter, wonderful. If it doesn't, I'm not too worried. I probably will take it apart in the winter time and just sort of put it close to um, the building just so it doesn't freeze to, to pieces. So we have, oh, and here we have some oregano. There's always some oregano. And again, this is great on like pizzas and stuff like that. And I have some rosemary. I have got to get the rosemary. I thought I had everything here. So, you're so do I'll go ahead and. and you're gonna do... Well, oh, I, that's right. I have to show the flowers. Well, I show the flowers. Would you go get my rosemary? Sure. Thank you. It's up on the porch. <laughs> so some of the other ideas you could do would be like portulaca. Now portulaca comes in different colors. This one here is a great big flower. Now this particular portulaca is one of the newer varieties, newer cultivars, and uh, real thick leaves. It can handle hot, hot, hot sun and dry, 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 dry soil. The one thing about this one, this is the newer variety, um, it will open up, it's kind of like a um, union worker. It, it opens up uh, around eight o'clock in the morning and it closes around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So if you work and go to work at seven, 7.30, you don't come home until after five, don't get this, get the old fashioned one. The old fashioned one, the flowers are smaller, it's not as robust looking as this, but you'll be able to enjoy them except on the weekends. So the other thing I have is this really cool plant right here. This is called the lemon coral plant. It's a cascading one. And uh, I, I like the color, the texture, um, the line of this. I think it's going to be really nice. And I also have another weeping one like this that is green. Let me pull it out here. And this one I had to water because it had been sitting in the car. Poor thing and got a little too dry, as you can see that. Now this one though, this is called Goldilocks, and it looks really pretty, it looks very, very similar to the other ones. This one needs to be watered an awful lot. This one needs moist soil. When you realize that, you realize that this is not the kind of plant we have. So I'm gonna put it off to the side, I'll find another place for it. This one right here though, this likes hot, dry areas. It doesn't like to be watered an awful lot. So this is really good. And the nice thing also about having a clay pot instead of a plastic pot, if we have torrential downpours and these get soak up and wet, it's really okay because the clay pot itself will dry out very, very quickly. So as long as you've got everything that's going to be able to dry quickly, you'll be fine. The other thing I thought I'd just kind of show, just for fun, another idea to go ahead and put if you're going to put these together would be to get vinca. Vinca is um, a nice plant, really pretty colors, really dark, dark green leaves as soon as it gets really hot. Um, right now we've had a very cool spring, so there's a lot of yellow leaves. And a lot of people think, oh, this is not doing well. The thing you want to do is always take a look at the roots. And this one has gorgeous roots. So this one obviously has good roots um, and the yellow leaves is simply because it has been chilly. So a couple of days of 80 and 90 degree temperatures, it's going to be fine. So what we're going to do though, instead of the flowers, I'm going to stick with herbs. I'm going to do the parsley sage rosemary and thyme because it's fun. Uh, with this one right here, it's in the kind of pot that I'm going to just pull it out. Oh, sorry, I was going to cut the plastic off. Oh, you want to cut the plastic off? Yeah, that well, sounds good. That way you can use the whole pot. All right. Okay. See, it takes two to play with this game. Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. I like to actually peel the pot off because, as you see, when you water it, this part up here is dry. And if you kept that on, the, uh, the pot would actually dry here and dry all the way down here. So it's one of those things, sometimes it's better just to get rid of it. So, okay, I need to make this a little bit shallower too, because I don't want it to be too heavy. There we go. So, and again, you're just basically sprinkling the soil around it, just like that. Uh-huh. 
You want to go ahead and start planting okay. some? Okay. Here right. we go. You can do rosemary? Uh, you can do the rosemary and I'll do the sage. Okay, what's going in the small pots? Um, I think is... I think the thyme should go in the in the small pots. Okay. Uh, so what have you got? So we have, you've got the uh, rosemary, right. I've got the parsley, okay. parsley, sage, rosemary, and we'll have oregano just for fun. Okay. All right? There we go. Grab this. Now, sage has a tendency to be very, very large. And uh, so you're going to put that in the bigger pot. I'm going to put this in a bigger pot. Yes, okay. indeed. I like this gardening bench. You can just throw things on the floor and say, oh, I'll clean that up later on. It's my kind of cleaning. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move this off. All okay. right. We get, do we have enough for? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay. Yes, of All course. Right. Perfect. Okay. Because we need one more thing for the big pot. Yes, and that would be the oregano. Oh, okay. Yeah, oregano goes yes. wild. I know. It does. But it'll cascade nice. It'll look yes. really, really pretty. I like that idea. Okay, where we go? Mm -hmm. Rosemary. This up. I'm thinking lamb chops. Ah, this would be good. All right. So there's this. Okay. You've got a small one there? Yep. I've got a small one here. That's your thyme? You've got the lemon thyme? I have two of these. When you're doing the uh, coffee filter, you really only need to have one. Yeah. So this is the German, and you have the lemon thyme, and I have the German thyme. I think there's a French and an English thyme. There's all kinds of thymes. Uh, I planted one year um, about six different thymes in my herb garden, and when all the thymes died, I guess I just didn't have time for anything. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. Sina, you're supposed to laugh. My friends never oh. laugh at my awful oh. jokes. They're awful oh. jokes, too. OK, let's see if I can bring this up. <laughs> Now you know why I'm not a stand-up comic. Because no, I just I don't After have that it. joke, we're going to put you in time out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't think I have time for that either. Sorry, I am having trouble with this plastic. This is... Ah! There we it go. It has a scissor symbol on it. Yeah. And, and true horticulture if we're using kerning shears. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what we do. We do that. And once again, yeah. take, always take a look at the roots. These are very fibrous roots. It's, they don't have a lot of color, but these are good fibrous roots for this particular kind of plant. So that'll be fine. Throw them in. Like that's that. going to go on the wall. Now, uh, they did say you can bring this inside, but if you have the clay pots, you're going to have water on the floor hmm. if you decide you want to keep it inside. Oh, I guess you could put it in the, in the uh, shower. Yeah. That would be a pain, though. Put I have a feeling that put this it is going to be... the kitchen sink. That's true. I th this is going to be kind of on the heavy side, too. So yeah, I'm it just going to put that is, one right there. It is. There um, go. Yeah, you're a little, um, I'm going to be to be careful because you're a little high up on the, yeah. I have to pop that down. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this yeah. soil yeah. off. Yeah. We you know, what you can do with plants is so many times people go, oh, you can't do that to a plant. Sure you can. Just go ahead and cut it down to the size you need it to be and push it in. There we go. Okay, it'll be fine. So, okay. So we have them all together now. So now we have our six plants each. And now we're going to go over Multiple and times. show how we're going to hang these things up. Okay. Let's see if that works. Are you ready? You might as well be <laughs> All right. Okay. You I'll want to bring the ferns over and... Yeah, we'll, we'll do the ferns first. We'll do the ferns first. Okay. And Asparagus. Okay. i got to get the boards. We need Rabbit's the foot. Okay. And I'm going to get the boards this is... and come over to... The, the hanger. Fire. Okay, good enough. All right, we come need join us. Plants. All right, we're gonna bring, I have to bring the little plants too. Okay, now here comes the part where it's gonna be lots of fun. I'm gonna put my herbs over here, and I'm going to assist you. I'm going to be your assistant while okay. you put in your plants. So well, now, when I read the directions, they're very specific about mm -hmm. how how you what order you do this so that you okay. don't tip it and everything falls down. So you have to so start? So they tell you to start with the second ear or holder down. Okay, so that's okay. the button for in there. And hold on to that. All right, and I'll hold on to this. I'll hold on to that. And, and then the rabbit's the ear rabbit's is going to go. And then you twist it slightly to make sure it's seated. Okay. Okay, and then the other big ones come up. Okay. And then make sure it's that's set. That's the maidenhair fern. Okay, and here's hang these. on to the bottom. Just bring a rye, yes. Okay. 
And then and there we go. Springer eye is right here. Let me go ahead and here. pull this back down. Okay. And and we can arrange it differently. All right. Actually, maybe the rabbit's foot can go change it. Okay. Hold I on think the rabbit's foot would be better up high, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold okay. on to the. Hold on to it. Mm -hmm. If you're doing this by yourself, this is more it, of a problematic. Magic. Yes. It's here, more let problematic. Me hold, okay. Let me hold. Let me hold that one. Yes. As long as if I have two pots on one side, I want to make sure I only have one pot <laughs> per time on. Okay, turn it. And this this also shows you have to be a good friend as well as a good gardening <laughs> friend because otherwise, you're give, if you're going to give somebody <laughs> something like this, yeah, you have to. Okay, okay, so now we have our base and we're all even. That's why now we have we have extensions. ears. Yeah, These we are have the ears. ears. Here, have an okay. ear. Okay, have an ear. And this so, one goes. So you can put them anywhere as long as you have them balanced on either side. Okay. So it can go. Okay, so this gun, that should go on top. One can go on top this, as long as you have. Okay, that'll cascade. And then this one will cascade down, down here. Right. There you go. And there you have. And you can buy more pieces and you can hang and more of it as long as it's balanced. Isn't that the coolest thing? It's like this little mobile. So we can swing in the breeze a little bit. Um, you obviously don't want to have it in an area where there's a lot of high wind. You don't want this to be crashing against the tree. But you can take a hose and hose it down, and yes, it's fine. Yes, fine. I, I think awesome. since you have the pots, you know the the uh, clay pots, it's going to dry out. But here it get, gets a little irrigation, and I yeah. think it'll be very happy here in the shade. Okay, let's take it apart and see what it looks like with herbs. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. I'll we take have to take it guy. very carefully. Right. And now we're going to try it with the herbs. So the first one I'm going to put in is rosemary, and it has to go in. And you said have to t tilt you it. Turn it just a bit to make sure it's set. Okay. Does that okay. look like it? I and think then it's you set. Hang on to it. Okay. And then you do one on the other and side. Right now. Down here. All right. Once again, kick it in and turn it a little so bit. So it settles it straight. Oh, okay. okay. I thought you were twisting. Yeah. It. Okay. We turn it just a little bit. Okay. Hold a second. Let me get the others. Don't let it fall on my head. Nope. Okay. You hold on to the parsley. I'll okay. put the sage. I'm gonna put the sage down here because okay. sage is big and heavy. I want it to be on the bottom. There we go. Okay. And put the parsley on the top. There we go. There we go. Good. Okay. Right. Now we have and to add the ears. Two, two little extensions. I and like to you can put them ears. where you want. You know, you can put okay. one here and one there, or up, down, okay. doesn't matter. But they both one has to go on either side. Okay. You there's have, one. Okay. And, and here is the other. There we go. All right. And then we have the two times. I'll let you hold this time. Do you have okay. time for that? Yeah. Good enough. I have time enough for you. <laughs> Okay, and here's one time. There we go. And here is the other time. And make sure they're set. Okay. That looks really good. Wow. And then you have your hanging herb garden. This is a hanging herb garden. Isn't that gorgeous? Get back in there. I love that. And get back in there. Okay, so guys, this is not all that difficult. If we could put it together, uh, Jean's very good about reading directions, thank goodness, but isn't that gorgeous? But isn't it fun what they can make out of three boards? And, that and a bunch of that. pots. <laughs> I know. And when he get handed it to us, I was like, it's just three boards with holes in them and little notches. But they're all handmade, and so um, he makes them individually himself in his yeah, garage. That's really cool. So I cool. thought that was really cool. I love it. I love it. And I hope you guys liked it, too. Thank you so much, Jean. This is Jean Scott. She's a horticulturist. And she comes up with the best cool things. But you're welcome. And thanks for helping me put this together. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining us for Delmarva Gardens right here on Pack 14. Pack 14.